Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to the April 29th, 2024 Administrative Services Committee meeting. I'm present this evening, and this is sort of roll call as myself, uh, Council President, who's also a member of this committee, Tony Kuda, and the uh, Vice Chair, Council Member Jim Petras, also joining us this afternoon is uh, Gail Larson. Uh, the first item on our agenda is captioned a general discussion of uh, Chapter uh, 111 um, committee slash appointments and, and connection with that. And I will have this posted um, on our document board. I'm sorry, it, it's not there now. I just finished it uh, shortly before we came today. Is a proposed amendment to 111.11 uh, uh, committees. And uh, essentially, um, under our current legislation, uh, 111 11 just talks about uh, council may provide from time to time by resolution for such standing and special committees. Um, and then we have, I think, just used that umbrella legislation to go ahead and appoint um, by resolution or ordinance our uh, uh, task force and our committees. Um, this proposed amendment, which the law department has not taken a look at, would break that section down into council committees, which is essentially uh, 111 as it is currently drafted, and then add a subsection B and then some new provisions for um, council uh, appointing citizen advisory committees, which we've been doing previously uh, under the old legislation. And it just sets forth a process that we'll use to um, fill vacancies, require an application, uh, require the council review all of those applications before we uh, take any vote. It sets forth a timeline that we want to give the public um, some adequate notice of the vacancies um, before we uh, make any appointments. It's things that we have been doing at least, I believe, for the last three years. We've been doing it, but we've been doing it informally. And so the purpose of this is to... Um, codify it so there's no question that this is some process that will follow. Uh, and then it just specifies that all of the committee meetings will be governed by Robert's Rules of Orders and they'll comply with the Ohio Open Meetings Act and the Ohio Public Records Act, um, things that are occurring already. And then there's also a provision um, because we have so many existing um, commissions and boards that may have their own specific rules and regulations to the extent that this legislation would conflict with that, it would not apply. So for example, there is no uh, provision that allows for us to remove members because of uh, uh, repeated absences or for disruptive um, conduct or behavior. And with that, I'll open that up to uh, discussion. Uh, I granted, I just gave it to everyone. This is just to get a discussion on this started. And again, the law department has not seen it. And neither of you guys until five minutes well, ago. I, I did look at this uh, as kind of a, you know, as part of this comprehensive look that, that it, I had here. And, and maybe I, that's a good segue into um, what no, you've got. No, no, I think... I think we should just stick to this one. I mean, if I'd like to discuss this one particular and I see what you've added here. Um, but it, it does go with the, the process um, notes that I made at our last meeting. I see a question over here. Oh, I'm so, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Thank you Please. for drafting this up. Um, I think that this is great. Um, there's just one thing that catches my eye. Okay. So B1 says that um, has been created or that a vacancy has occurred due to resignation or expiration of a term. Um, but later we talk about how um, someone can be removed. So maybe resignation or expiration of a term isn't broad enough. Do we need to also include 
um, due to resignation, removal, or expiration of a term? Yeah, honestly. Or that a vacancy has occurred. Well, you know what? You to, or simply, or that a vacancy has occurred. Okay. Uh, and just take out due to resignation or expiration. Okay. Thank you. I may want to clear, and this will again have to be looked at by the law department. In the case of an emergency, a temporary interim appointment may be made. Should probably have some language added to it, uh, to, without you know, without following the four weeks' notice or something like that. I mean, imagine right. if we had a situation where we had a, a mass, you know, resignation, and we had to fill. Um, uh, the positions in order to have a quorum to go forward with a meeting. So we're, you yeah, know, like the planning commission or the board of zoning appeals or something like that. It's an unforeseen. But it could be like something, you know, something's coming before them and it would be before the four weeks. And I mean, that's always yeah. possible. I just, you know, I, I think our goal is we want to have our process as transparent and open as possible. Uh, I know in the past history of this city, uh, there were often appointments that were made and there was no uh, broad advertisement made to the public. Council just reached out to whoever they wanted to have um, fill a vacancy and that person filled out an application and they had a meeting and got appointed. Mm -hmm. Shall we go to your... Um, talking points, Tony, or did you still want to? Well, I, I'm just perusing this a little bit, the, the additions you made. I I, I mean, I, I'm now realizing just the first paragraph is pretty much intact, and then you got some other... Yeah, so um, I just think we should make a decision about, um, you, you know, do... Do we want to speak with the chairs annually or before appointments are renewed? Just talking about renewals right now. And, it, you know, I would want to commit to saying whatever the chair says goes as far as, you know, whether we're, you know, going to return the person or not. I, I, you know, we're pretty automatic on that, but... But it would be good, I think, to hear from them and have that be a consideration. I, you know, no, the, the consideration. Also, do we want the chairs to report absences or, I'll just put it this way, whatever we decide about absences and whether or not people can stay on committees due to absences, do we want those absences reported monthly to Addy? Like, do we want to have a place we want our clerk to keep, you know, records of this, or do we want to annually? Um, I'm just. I guess what I'm. What I'm afraid of is, will we be if we if we do want this information? Do we want to just trust that a year later this information is going to be available from each chair, or, you know, conduct, uh, so forth. Uh, yeah. Or do we want it uh, reported on a monthly basis? Or it's not even necessarily a monthly basis. I mean, I don't know that all these committees meet monthly, but do they, yes, have, to, do they have to um, produce meeting minutes or notes? I think that's being done on a case by case, case basis. by case basis. Okay, I was thinking if that were required, which it seems like it's not. That could be a way to collect that, like set that expectation that that be included in the meeting notes. I guess one of my concerns is, is that there are people that would, I think, would love to be on a committee, and there are committees with people who don't show up. 
and and I want there to be a mechanism for that to happen when it happens. I don't think that's what happens most of the time. I think most of the people are very dedicated. But in that case where, you know, people just lose interest or whatever. I think we have been relying on whoever these committee chairs are, if there is a problem, to come to someone on council and alert them. And I've only been aware of a couple of problems in the last few years. I think we need to be careful about burdening these committees with volu- that are volunteer people with extra paperwork requirements. Uh, every, and to the extent that it doesn't exist now, every committee, we ought to have some council liaison that is appointed that should go to these meetings, at least periodically, and have a conversation with the committee chair um, to find out what's going on and then come back and report to city council on that to the extent that we don't have council members going to these meetings now. You know, I was saying this last month or a few weeks ago, um, I do think it would be a good thing to have the, the chairs come in and talk to this committee because to the extent that we don't know what's going on in every committee. And even if even if some committee was a committee that reflected one of our areas, you know, that would just be one committee or commission or whatever that we'd be familiar with. Um, I just think it's good to get an annual update of some kind, you know, even if it's five minutes, um, as opposed to never hearing anything. Right. I, so that's kind of one thing. And as far as burdening them with paperwork, I mean, if if Addie, you know, and I'm only saying this because it seems practical, if Addie just emailed them once a month and said, you know, could you hear the people, you know, tell me who was there, who was or not there, you know, what I mean, and she kept track of it, it would, you know, be something, I don't know, is that... Is that a burden for Addie? I don't know. I don't don't know. I I don't know to what extent uh, there's a written roll call being taken at all of these meetings either. I don't know. I think that if we're going to codify um, attendance as a reason, a potential reason for removal, that it would be good for us to set the expectation that um, attendance be documented. So that's what I'm partial to right now. But I, I do agree. It needs to I mean, God bless these people that, that volunteer. You know, I don't I want to make this I don't want to burden anybody. Uh, I'm assuming that if somebody doesn't want to be on a committee anymore, usually they'll resign. But in those odd cases where people don't show up and they don't resign, um, I wouldn't want to um, make a decision and just say, well, we don't really know how many times you were there or anything, but it seems like you know, or we were told that it was a lot. You know, you know in terms of the, those kind of terms are so vague. Um, but if there's a way just to, I mean, you know, that's just a simple thing that every committee does. You know, you call the roll, and I don't consider that a burden. I guess. Yeah, well, certainly to the extent they're not doing it, we could make sure they've got a roster sheet of members and they are taking attendance. Yeah, I, I think that needs to happen. And the whole conduct thing, I mean, to me, I do think we should talk to the chairs once a year, minimum, I, 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 I probably maximum, you know, and just say, how's it going? And there's that opportunity. I don't think, I think it's a little bit uncomfortable to initiate something for a chair, you know, like, oh, I'm having a problem with so-and-so, but um, if it's a, if there, it, would we discuss something like that in executive session? We would. If there was a problem? Because it, it concerns the uh, conduct of someone that's considered to be a public official. Yeah. And currently to remove anyone, uh, they would be entitled to a hearing. Okay. I mean, it's it's very unlikely, but but like you said, it has happened 
points. One one person since I've been on council, and we simply did not reappoint that person yeah. when their term was up. That's yeah. a tool you have, isn't it? To just not reappoint. Good point. And then, you know, with the new members, um, you know, I think it would be a good, uh, again, a, another good opportunity from the chairs. Hey, do you feel like you're, we should always be asking about the diversity and, you know, and everything that encompasses geographic, gender, race, you know, whatever there is. And um, because when we're looking at new members, those are things we need to know ahead of reviewing the applications. And then when we do review the applications, we can do that. Whether we want to interview prospective members or not, I mean, I'm just throwing that, I just put that in there. I don't think we need to interview anybody for returning members, but, you know, new members. I would leave that up to our discretion. Uh, and I think for some instances, we have called people in for interviews for the significant six-year term appointments that are quasi-judicial. There have been other appointments we've had, and I don't know that I would want to codify that. Well, I guess what I think would be good to codify is that new members will be appointed based on, um, you know, uh, DEI uh, needs, uh, their, the applications, I'm not saying in this order or anything, you know, a reviewing of applications and or, or interview, you know, I mean, not and or, like you don't have to do the other two, but I think putting that applicants may be asked to be interviewed um, so that it's an option and it's in there as opposed to it's not in there and why am I being interviewed so-and-so wasn't you know, didn't didn't be interviewed. Shouldn't the possibility of it be in there so that when, if and when we were to do it, it wasn't, I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? I do, but I don't know that we need to codify a requirement that we make an appointment, that we have an interview process in some instances where we have less applicants that we have openings. Um, I just, I believe in having flexibility. Does it hurt to, to, to put something in there about as long as it's discretionary? Yeah, yeah but I mean, it, I, don't, I don't believe in trying to legislate every conceivable um, situation that may come up. It's, it's best to be flexible. I guess... I guess what I'm thinking about is future councils who are not involved in the process we're going through right now. I mean, it would be, to me, them seeing this would be like, oh, okay, that's something we could do. Um, and, you know, if they thought it was, I just feel like if we leave it out, it looks like it's not even something that could be done. That's, I guess, what I'm saying. You have more of that legal. No, I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't know okay. that it has anything to do with a legal requirement. Okay, that's not where your head's at. As far as that, you, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't want to make things unnecessarily uh, cumbersome, and I often believe the less, the less that is said, um, that leaves you more latitude and flexibility. Uh, the better. I mean, I'm not concerned about any, I mean, sure it could happen, I'm not concerned about any future city councils being more restrictive and more secretive about the process. Uh, but let me take a look at that and certainly we can we can draft some provision I mean, about that. I mean, my thought is you could have a, a position like the Planning Commission 
where you do one interview. You could have two people that counsel is split on it. They're both like really good. Well, why don't we bring them in? You know, kind of thing. I mean, because, you know, there's, um, it's just not an easy decision for some reason. And then there could be one council person that says, I think you guys better be careful because blah, 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 blah. And you're like, well, the only way we could figure that out is to bring them in. I mean, I'm just, I don't think it should be put, I don't think it's necessary. Maybe not even in most, most cases, but I don't, I just feel funny about the idea of um, it not being written anywhere and people doing it. Um, well, it doesn't say, I don't like that it doesn't say you can't, so we're going to interview people this time. That, that's, that's actually come up. I remember in the Charter Review Commission, you know, I was like, well, wait a minute, this says this. And it says, yeah, but it doesn't say you can't. Do. And then it's like, eh, you know, I don't know. That makes me more uneasy when people bring that up as a, as a rationale. Can we just leave it up to the law department? Note that this is something that we discussed and leave it up to their judgment. They're the lawyers. Well, they can only talk about the legal side of it. I mean, then if they, so their answer, if their answer was you could do it either way and it's, it's fine. That would be one thing. Then we'd be back to where we are now, which is talking about, you know, the discretionary language that we want to use for the reasons. I would like future councils to know that that's an option for them by just reading something. Okay. I don't want them to, 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 to have to go to legal counsel and say, hey, it doesn't say anything about interviewing people, but we think that might be best. Can we do this? I, I mean, of those two options... I'd rather it be written down that yes, you can. That's that's me. I think I said too much. No, we could. I, it, it something could probably be inserted in this current section too. I'll, I'll give that some thought about. You know, as as, as, as part of the application process, you know, um, uh, and an applicant may be required to interview before an appointment is made or something. Like that. It doesn't hurt. <clears throat> But on the other hand, I, it also I, legally it's not necessary for us to be able to do it. We can do it. Right. I understand the legal part of it. Um, and then lastly, um, I, I still think it would be, it, it, any on the uniform standards part on here, I think, I think that, that if we had some chairs, and I'm not saying they, they have to all show up or anything, but if we had some chairs in and we talked about you know, their processes for their meetings and, um, you know, what they do and, you know, what works in their committees and so forth. Um, you know, we, we might hear something from them and, you know, that we just, we don't know about just because we don't, we don't conduct these meetings. And, as a best practice. As a best practice, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't even want to answer, you know, that's why I didn't put anything other than let's talk to the chairs because I have no particular uniform standards in mind, but I do see the value in possibly codifying some uniform standards that seem to work across the board as opposed to leaving it open for committees to run completely differently from each other. Like what's an example? Um, well, it's, it's, it has centered around um, attendance and behavior and um, taking note, you know, notes and so forth. But the reason I wrote this down was not because of the things I know about. It's the things that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the question kind of is not possible to answer because the, I want to have them in to, to hear about things I haven't thought about. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would assume maybe none of us have. Uh, so there's no, for instance, on that. I'd, I'd like to hear from them if they have some some ideas about. Hey, here's here's what we're proposing. Should anything else be in there? Because we don't know. 
because we don't go to your meetings. You know, maybe we should, but we don't. So. <clears throat> I think I've been to, I think I've been to, to every meeting though at least once, but that's far from makes me an expert. Anything else on your uh, discussion points that we haven't looked at? Mm -hmm. I think currently we have two vacancies. We have the land, Landmark Commission and we have uh, a vacancy on the Transportation and Mobility Committee. And we're waiting for the mayor to come forward with his appointments. Well, we have, council has one appointment, or is that not true? We have the Transportation and Mobility Committee yep. appointment. For council. For council. Yeah. And then the mayor has his appointments that he needs to make for that, for sustainability and the mobility committee. Is Arts Commission, CIC, CIC, and CIC, yeah. and then we'll have to vote on those. And you can set forth the process about how you want to do that when that comes up. You know, are you going to? Are we going to bring his applicants <laughs> in for interviews? Are we just going to review their applications? Um, so, with regard to um, the transportation vacancy, are we able to look at the applications that were recently submitted before this vacancy was created and choose someone from those, or do we have to, ex or are we limited in only looking at applications after, like a vac vacancy is created? Well, for, we were we're looking at all of the applications that were submitted for that and we were giving deference to people that were either um, existing members at the time that this new legislation went into effect or had been on one of the had been on the committee beforehand and we were going to give preference to those individuals uh, I don't know if that position has changed about how we wanted to Fill, fill that position. I think it's, it, it's up to us if we want to go back and, and revisit that. So, so I guess my point is there's nothing preventing us from looking at some of those really great applicants who just applied um, because the vacancy was created after they applied. Is that correct? We looked at all of the applicants that right. came in and there were and there were excellent people and we just, we didn't have enough vacancies to fill. Right. So we don't Certainly, if, if, if a new applicant were to apply, we would review that and give it some consideration. But I believe that we still have enough great applicants okay. that we looked at. And hopefully the mayor is looking at those same applicants and will and we'll soon act to put those names in front of us so we can vote on them and get that committee up and running, those committees both up and running. Do we have a timeline in mind for filling that transportation vacancy? I ask because um, are we able to, this is a question, are we able to potentially amend the agenda for this meeting to consider folks who applied for that commission previously? That is a discussion that I would want to have. Certainly we could do it, but I think the discussion of any particular applicants should occur in an executive session. If I may, um, Tony and I had an exchange about this same question is, but the, the timing, we know that these committees deserve to be con convening now, but his comment was that perhaps we shouldn't look, council shouldn't look at the applicants that we already have until the mayor has made his selections. So. So we wait. So we wait and they can't meet. Which is unfortunate, yeah. but. Did your question get answered on that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, th I think <laughs> we, have, we have some great people that we'd love to appoint. Um, 
do we have any idea when the administration may nominate people for vacancies? I know that in housing related conversation, I asked the mayor about appointments to the CIC and he did not have a particular timeline in mind. I asked, are you thinking this spring, in the next six months, within the next 12 months? And he wasn't prepared to commit to a rough timeline. Yes. As this is a thorn in my side, right? Um, I'm wondering if, because we have, for our appointment to council, for instance, we had 45 days. Would we be able to put some kind of requirement on the council's filling of each committee? And, you know, we just talked about 111. Is that something that can be considered that the appointment, you have four weeks for people to apply, and then council makes a decision within a time period. I'm just extrapolating here. And then the mayor additionally for his appointments, in this case on these two committees especially, to be given a timeline. That's an interesting idea. I, I don't know if that's even realistic, but. Well, you could pass legislation that, you know, with respect to the mayor having appointments, I don't know that we can go back and do anything retroactive, but no, going forward in the future could certainly put a provision in that if the mayor were to fail to, to make an appointment within X number of days. We then, know it works the other way then, around. Then, you know, <laughs> could, could council act, but the only, you know, the problem with that or what has to be addressed is if we were to purposely vote down uh, applicants, that the people that the mayor had submitted and I, I don't know the logistics of that. I'd, I'd have to think that well, through. Well, just off the top of my head, I mean, you know, it would be, I mean, if you submit, that that satisfies it. Whether we, you know. Right. I mean, that would, that that's, I would consider that the, the pointer's fault. Um, Could someone remind me how many people are on the environmental and sustainability? With, is that okay if I answer that? Sure, yes. You're the only one that knows. Well, we have four people that are appointed by council. Mm -hmm. Three are appointed, voting members I'm talking about now. Three are appointed by the mayor. And a an eighth person is, in the case of the transportation mobility, is the city administrator. Mm -hmm. And then on the case of CESC, it's um, yeah. whoever's the coordinator of uh, environmental sustainability for the city. So what's quorum for these groups? Is it just four? So 50%? I don't think so. So the person, it's four voting members. And is the city administrator or the coordinator, are they considered voting members or no? No, they are not. Okay. So in the case of the environmental commission, they have a quorum and transportation does not have a quorum because someone resigned and the mayor has not nominated anyone. Yeah, and I have asked that question if they could, if cl climate and environmental sustainability could convene, and I haven't gotten an answer to that from the law department. So, why would they not be able to? It's just you, here's another a nuance, right? It's a nuance, and and if I was on the committee, I would could go one. I would like to start meeting. We can start working on our initiatives, or two. Without all seven members present, are we going to be a strong and and um, productive. So I could see both ways. No. In the interest of getting the committee or the commission um, moving, I think that I would, I certainly understand different perspectives on this, but I think that I would favor trying to fill that one vacancy on the transportation committee. That's my thought, just throwing it out there. Well, I'll defer to council leadership on whether they want us to uh, go forward with going ahead and, and filling that position. But it, as Member Larson indicated, as a practical matter, I don't, <clears throat> without having that full committee and without having participation from the administrations, um, 
co-chair on that, I think it will be difficult for those committees to be effective, even if they go ahead and meet. It, it, do we have reason to believe that the co-chairs will not be participating? The administration's well, they co-chair? Be. They've already right. said they'll be there. So, so long as we can get four council appointed members, even if the mayor hasn't nominated anyone, which we can't control, we have no idea when he may appoint them or nominate them. Is there any reason, or you said that you reached out to the law department to see if- I need to follow up on that. And maybe Tony, when you meet with the president, yeah. the mayor. Tomorrow. That's just my thought, just one of, one of Nelson. Okay. All right, shall we move on to Council Member Petrus's proposed uh, ordinance, which is amending section 1110. So initially, it, is it okay? um, so initially um, there were two things that, um, that came to mind for me when I drafted this. Um, one um, being included in executive sessions and two being copied on communications to um, all council members. And especially on that second one, I thought that that um, should really be okay given that all of our emails are public records. Um, whenever the law department took a look at it, um, the law director was hesitant to prescribe that people would have to be included in executive sessions. Um, so that was removed. Um, and while our emails are public records, um, he shared that, you know, in his view, neither the clerk nor council president should make it a habit to send emails to all members of council. And so he would not want to codify that practice. So um, as an alternative, um, they newly elected folks, if this were to pass, would receive um, the schedules of the various meetings of council um, so that they're aware of those. So that's what this would currently enable. And as I mentioned during a committee of the whole meeting, um, I think I see this as a first step. Um, there are a lot of cities that have training requirements. Um, I'm actually tempted to take the language from uh, Lakewood and just include it in here. Um, it specifies like a number of contact hours um, on a number of different topics. Um, and so, like I said, I'm tempted to include it in here, but I'm not sure how long it might take the law department to, you know, look at that language and, you know, um, become okay with it. So I'm okay with this as it is without adding an amendment regarding training. And I haven't looked at the Lakewood ordinance. When does that, I'm assuming that training provision only starts to run after they've been sworn in. I believe that that's true. I'm not certain, but if I remember correctly, so um, it requires training for both the mayor and newly elected council members. Returning council members don't have to go through it. I think that it's like four contact hours for a newly elected council member on a whole variety of topics um, from, you know, human resources to, um, to, to economic development. Um, and for the mayor, I believe that it's uh, six contact hours, if I remember correctly. My recollection is it starts the day after you're elected. Okay. And then there's like a certain amount of time you have into your term where you, you should have it completed, mm -hmm. but that you could work on it. This is, I mean, I looked at it a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. but that, that's my recollection. I could pull up the language. Yeah, I'm sitting here looking, trying to pull it up right now. Um, actually, I think that it is in their charter, um, not their not ordinances. Um, but, you know, I think that that would also be valid because whenever I came in, I was sort of trying to 
and he did prepare a binder, which I appreciated, but you know, in a lot of different areas, I was just sort of like assuming like, okay, I'm going to need an email. So let me reach out and see how I can get that started. And, you know, if there were an opportunity, whether it's with the clerk or the law department or someone else to go through some of this basic stuff, I think that that, you know, that that could be valuable. Chairman Cobb. Yes. With um, our current brand new council member. You're, you're reading my mind. Yeah, because I'm thinking about filing with the his financial report quickly. It has to be done soon. And he's uh, in um, any of those ethics commission, sunshine law, all that yes. stuff. Is it in the binder? Did, did that get presented in terms of communicating with the powers that govern us? To be honest, I cannot remember. I don't think that it was. Mm -hmm. Um a good portion of the binder was like directory information, so phone numbers for folks in the city. Um, so I'd have to check and get back to you. So here's the good news. I went over all of that with our clerk of council, okay. including the stuff you just said. Um, you know, here are the things that need to be done. But it, <laughs> that was me riffing. Um, it was, you know, which which in some cases can be done well. You know, yeah, if you would, would thanks. It um, should be in the binder. But, but what we need is um, a, you know, new council members, appointments, you know, and everything. Yeah. Just so that there's a checklist of things that need to go through. Now, Addie and I happen to be meeting on this tomorrow, but, uh, but we verbally went over it already, and we're going to create a list um, and you know what? I would very much like members who, you know, to see that. Mm -hmm. Now we won't be able to go back and forth on it, but we could, we could mail that out, and everybody could um, send something to Eddie. Oh, you forgot this, or you forgot that, you know, or something, whatever. So um, in their charter it says. City is committed to the best practices of municipal governments, innovation, and administration, including those related to ethics, finance, budgeting, safety forces, infrastructure, human resources, planning and development, and current issues facing Lakewood. To achieve these goals, council members and the mayor shall complete training on the best practices of municipal governments and administration. Training sessions are to be provided by the city as determined by council within three months of a person's election or appointment to the position of council member or mayor. Training shall consist of four contact hours of instruction for new council members and 16, I apologize, I was way over there, so contact you, hours of instruction for a new mayor. So do you read that as you could start right away after you're elected, but, okay. you, but you within have, three months, but you have to do it. Yeah. When, when, by the, like maybe a month into your appointment. Or, you know, have two two hour sessions with Addie or someone else specified by council. So I, in principle, think that it would be good to include something like this. Um, like I said, I'm tempted to really just copy this and put it into what we have here. But, you know, I'm aware that that could delay this. And so I would be fine with just passing this and, you know, maybe working on this later. And, you know, I'm, I'm open-minded on it. I, I can tell you that I talked about this kind of a thing with, with former council president Hart within days of our being elected in 2021. Mm -hmm. it, we had a quite lengthy discussion. And, and I can tell you, I think it's as important now as I did then. And I don't think time should be wasted in between the time you're elected and the time you take office, um, it, it, unless it's unavoidable, you know, which which can't happen. You know, there are people that have jobs. You know, they take they take uh, you get a new job, and you don't have time until you're, you know, in office. You know, on second reading, so you asked when this starts. It sees to achieve these council members and the mayor. So this suggests to me that they have to first be sworn in before they could learn this. I mean, I would be fine with folks elected to council, but not yet sworn in, um, you know, being able to start this training. Well, I wouldn't shorten the time once you're elected. I mean, if it's three months, if, if the way you're reading it, and I, I certainly am willing to make a phone call on this, but uh, 
you know, I, I don't think you can expect people to do it when they're uh, elected, but I think it should be available to them. When they're yeah, elected. yeah I, I guess my point was that based on this language, it looks like in Lakewood, it doesn't start until you, after you're sworn in and it has to be completed within three months. I, thinking back to my own experience, see value in people being able to start sooner so that they could you know, learn as much as they can before being sworn in. And I would be comfortable with, you know, if someone has been shown to receive the most votes. And I know that our law department pushed back on this, but I really think we need, we councils, not just this council, need a primer on how to work with the law department. I don't see, I don't see any value in learning it as you go. I see only roadblocks and mistakes and you know hard knocks, uh, and I see a lot that could be avoided with a one to two hour session of like, here's how this works. And so, could I propose something? Um, well, I guess just to sort of test the if that's not there. part of that process that. Yeah, that's in the lake. So I guess just to sort of gauge interest, do we think that, you know, codifying something like what Lakewood has would be valuable here in our city? Is there an interest in that? Certainly. I don't know whether the Charter Review Commission is currently looking at adding something. So during my interview with them, um, I suggested that we consider adding something like this. And they told me that um, you know, it might be better if it were done in an ordinance. And that was my initial motivation for doing this. It was only after my interview with them when they suggested that it be included through an ordinance or required through an ordinance that I started working on this. And so I was thinking back to my own pain points whenever I uh, was elected, and that's what motivated the initial draft of that. Um, so, so what, do you mean? what are you reading? You're reading a, an ordinance or a... Well, um, what, what I read was in language charter. Okay. Um, but like I said, during my conversation with the Charter Review Commission, they... Yeah, that's pretty specific stuff for a charter entry. Yeah. I think. And so it seems like, you know, it would be better to have some flexibility in case, you know, we'd want to, to change some of this. So I guess if we do think that there's value in having a requirement like this, I would be happy to, if we wanted to move this... Um, draft forward, um, I would be happy to work on another draft for a training requirement to like bring up at a next committee meeting. Um, I'm not sure how long, rather than trying to include it in this, not knowing how long it might take the law department, um, you know, I think that I would be partial to creating like a second piece of legislation for, for this. Two thoughts on that. I would make it a separate piece of legislation. Okay. Um, and I think it would be a good idea to have a training and ethics requirement. The one piece, and I don't know, you know how you address this, in my view, to have a really good training period, training session orientation um, requires um, some help from the administration and it just can't be something that you're you know you're reading and you're meeting with the law department you have to have the opportunity to sit down and meet with these department heads and have a discussion with them about their job and what it all involves uh, i had that opportunity under the old form of city government i had a pretty comprehensive orientation training session for a couple of weeks that I don't think anyone else had had the, has had the benefit of that since we changed our form of government. Do you think that there's, so it seems like this language would enable that, but not necessarily guarantee that something like that would happen. So do you think that there's other language that would increase the chances that a newly elected person would get something like what you had? It's going to require the administration making those department heads, directors, employees available to meet with whoever the mm -hmm. new 
council members are. And are you saying you don't think that's something you can... Can you legislate that? Legislate. I don't know. That's a question yeah. for the law department. Yeah. My guess would be... You could, you know, by charter, I imagine you right, could impose right. that, but by ordinance, I don't know. That's, that's a question for well, the law The charter department. says, except for the purpose of inquiry, so we could maybe frame it as... You know, sort of inquiry. That's that's yeah. You know, you'd like to think that such legislation, you know, would be necessary. So if if you are in agreement that it would probably be better if this were separate, I could try to pull together some ideas, being mindful that the law department recently shared that it's easier for them if you know we leave drafting of legislation to them could share with them what I found here, do some research, see what some other cities do, and you know, note that based on your experience, you found value in talking with the department heads and see if there's anything that they um, you know, might recommend there, and then share that at the next meeting if you all like. Yes. I would like just a question. You said, and we all went through this, when you first come on, you wonder when you're gonna get your email. I don't think that that should be something that the appointee or the elected council member should do. I think that should be part of a checkoff list that Addie does for them and then that communicates that it's been done because you didn't know. Yeah, and it could be the case that she had a checklist that she was working yeah, from. I, I just, you know, preemptively reached out saying like, hey, you know, I actually reached out before I was sworn in. Yeah, but then just the logistics if, Yeah, if whatever might be needed to be yeah. done could be done in advance so that the day that I'm sworn in, an account could be provisioned. So I guess um, back to what I was saying, should I go ahead and pull together some ideas from various municipalities sure. and share at the, okay. Yes. And yeah, that works really well for the law department, right? When we have examples from other cities. Mm -hmm. We had that with the lead safe legislation. Mm -hmm. It was like something they could refer to and they use it and they, um, I don't think they have to ask permission. It's not copyrighted, it's public record, so. So I'll stop short of drafting legislation since they recently expressed that preference. And then also during um, one of the committee of the whole meetings, um, I know that Councilman Maddox expressed an interest in, um, you know, sharing ideas. So, um, you know, I'll reach out to him um, to see, you know, what he might think would be worth including. Well, we kind of already agreed and we're going to hopefully codify a resolution, if that's the right term, uh, on May 6th that we have a process that we've agreed to, a legislative process, and part of the process would be having a discussion in committee of the whole of new legislation. I mean, you could certainly welcome to have a private conversation with what I'm saying. This should happen as a matter of course, uh, regardless. So as it relates to um, the piece that's been drafted, um, are folks comfortable with it and comfortable with moving it back to Committee of the Whole for inclusion on the agenda. I'm all for this. I am. And thank you for taking the yeah. initiative. I just got a text from our clerk of council who must be watching our meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And she, just FYI, there is a list of resources in the council orientation book, including Ohio Sunshine Laws, financial disclosure information, and Ohio ethics laws. I've gone ahead and added PDFs from all their websites as well. So okay. I think Addie is uh, getting it all together. Uh, I don't know that previously there was any uh, playbook on orientation. I think the playbook was what was in uh, the prior uh, city managers um, had about what needed to be done. That being Susanna, who I think took the lead on orienting uh, all of the new council members. The first as the assistant city manager, and then when she was the acting city manager. 
we need to vote on moving this back to committee of the whole? If you want to make the motion. I uh, motion that we approve sending this drafted piece of legislation to committee of the whole. I'll second that. Any discussion? Oh, well, only to only to say, is there anything you want to change in there? That I'm fine with um, with it as it is, um, knowing that the law department is okay with this. I'm reluctant to make changes, um, not wanting to throw a wrench into the process, and you know, potentially wait a month or however long it might take for them to you know well, the, modify changes. So. I'm just hoping, I guess, that you add that we may want this to be. Um, activated upon election so that the law department can look at that as whether or not that's legal. Oh, yeah. So the, the training, yeah, the training. I will definitely note that in the stuff that I pull together or share during the next meeting. And I'm assuming that after the next meeting where we'll presumably talk through examples I could then send it over to the law department for them to begin drafting something. I mean, even if we decide not to do it that way, mm -hmm. I'd still like to know yeah. wh wh whether it's... And I think that it will be okay because in the piece that they drafted, um, so sorry, is there the first page of the... Does anyone have the first page? Yeah, I do. Did you let a hand? Um... So in what would be changed here, it says to all persons who have been elected to council but have not yet been sworn in. Oh, I see. So if it's okay in this section, then I think that it would be okay for that same sort of language to apply to training. And then it says even, um, where is it? If two candidates for election to city council receive votes in such numbers that an automatic recount would be required under Ohio law, both such candidates shall receive the notification and information described herein. So it even like has that sort of caveat. So, you know, I think that if they were able to include it here, we could also include that language regarding training. And then one person would, would be told at a later time, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Please forget everything you heard. <laughs> okay. Um, I think the last item then on our agenda is new business or other to discuss. Anything else? So uh, going through, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, going through... Uh, all these uh, uh, provisions, I think at this time, would be quite lengthy. Uh, but I would like to bring up something else and that is a little more bite size. Um, I do want to go through 111, and I would encourage you all to look through this um, uh, because I think there are things that we may want to change. Um, what I did was I starred the the ones that I thought, you know, could use a, a good going over. Um, and then there's some that are just, you know, pretty uh, plain. And you could skip 111.10 because it's, you know, what we talked about already. And, and no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that one and 111.11 because we've talked about those already. But the rest of them that are starred would, would be worth a look. Um, what I wanted to ask the committee is, so a month from now, we're going to get a, we're going to get recommendations from the Charter Review Commission. So a couple of things. They would like to present, uh, I, I think the chair would be the one, would like to present in June, perhaps at the first meeting, kind of a summary of their recommendations. Everybody okay with that? You're going to have that done at the full council meeting, right? Right, yeah. full council meeting. And then um, do you believe that we should be talking about 
to the recommendations and we need to be like, getting into this immediately uh, in Committee of the Whole. Yes, and I believe that's a discussion that should be done by all of council versus in a committee meeting because we all need to educate ourselves and particularly if it's going to require five council members to agree to put it these does. provisions on. And uh, so my suggestion is probably going to be that we do this in a committee of the whole that's not scheduled because these are not 15, 20 minute discussions. I mean, I would, I none of them, none of them. I mean, I don't know how many, I, I can't, that I can't. But um, I want to make you all aware since you're here that we're talking about June okay. and August. And that's really it. And I, you know, and, and I'm not going to preempt because I think by the end of August, we'll have, we'll have had to make, have made decisions and voted, you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that, you know, face value. I wouldn't want to have it be one meeting either. Go ahead. Um, how far in advance of an election would we need to approve something before it could appear it's, on a ballot? It's, it's the 75 days. Right. It's early in September. It's either early September or late August. And are we thinking that we might try to include some of these on the November ballot or next year? Or? I mean, that's something I don't think we should discuss here. Okay. Because that's a big decision. Uh, you know, so we, we need to we need to have multi-level discussions. You know, some are they gonna be the real big picture stuff. And I think once once we have a presentation to council and and all what will be seven of us see the scope of what it is we're taking on. I think that's when we can start talking about, well, you know, what would be practical? What, what would even be possible? Mm -hmm. You know, with, uh, with the timeline being what it is now, there'd be, you know, obviously would it be no excuse for not doing something by next year. But the question is, if we do something this year, what would it be and how much mm -hmm. could, could, get done. Um, yes. As a member of council that will be going through this experience with you, I would be happy to start considering what they, the work that they've done and are getting are meeting our timeline when you need to have us meet with them. So um, it is going to take time. It really will. To, to fairly look at their work and their um, needs and rationale, right? I think we'd be looking at a... Uh, a uh, Substantial amount of special meetings, yeah. and and you know, but that's that's what we have to talk about. So we yeah, we have a lot on our plate, and and I know that's not really this committee, but it's certainly administrative. It, it, well, it is. Yeah, but it, I think it's better to have that discussion by all of council. No, no, I, I, and my recollection is from before on that issue 26, that tiny charter amendment consumed several committee of the whole meetings. It did. And lots of public comment just on one small aspect of our charter. And, and there were lawyers hired, as I recall? Yes. And, you know, not, not in-house. I mean, farmed out stuff on one. So, I mean, we know, we have an idea. Well, we don't really have an idea. Yes, yes. There's cool. nothing, we haven't, we haven't been presented anything. But I, my sense is it's it's a lot. I mean, if they're working five hours a week, uh, you know, plus, or actually two meetings, who knows, seven, seven, eight hours a week. How do you determine how many public hearings to have? We hold, will we hold public hearings? I mean, that's, you know, these are all other decisions we're going to make okay. in, in committee of the hall. Um, it, so uh, um, I would just ask everybody to, uh, for, for our next meeting, to read over 111. And it's nine pages, but it's, it's, um, 
again, once you eliminate the, the no-brainers that are in here that don't need to be touched, you're really looking at, you know, eight or 10 ordinances. And, you know, they're, they're, like, a, they're like a paragraph, you know, or, or two short paragraphs. And I think what we should do in between now and the next time is just make some notes. You know, I, I, I mean, if anybody wants to write up something, I'd, I'd have no objection to that, but at least have some notes of things that you think could could use revisions or, and then, and then you know, I hadn't really thought about this, but if there's something that's just not in here, you know, that needs to be added, um, you know, I'd certainly be all ears. Okay, anything else? Well, um, it's 5.06. Uh, we are going to adjourn the meeting. If uh, any members of the public watch, thank you very much. Good night.